Everyone, welcome back to the shop. I'm Izzy, and today I am going to show you how to build this. This is a flushing fence. It's also been called a pattern fence. Also been called a template fence. Also been called a floating fence. And also a hybrid L fence. Yeah. So today we're going to jump right into building this fence and then I'm going to show you three common uses for a fence like this. So no matter what you call it, this makes a table saw even more handy than it already is. Now if you don't want to watch the build, the build lasts for about 2 minutes 15 seconds. That's coming up next and then we're going to jump into how to use it. So you can like skip through that 2 minutes and 15 seconds or you can watch it. You can do whatever you do want to do. But before we jump into that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification so you'll always see when we come up with new videos, crazy looking jigs, and other fun things here on the channel. Let's get to it. The flushing fence is a pretty straightforward build. It's made up of two main components and each main component is made up of three long pieces of plywood and three braces. So the part I'm working on right now I call the J component. It is the component that moves up and down in the system. Now the most important thing in this whole build is keeping everything as close to 90 as possible. And we do that with these braces. So once I had everything glued up and tacked together with my 23 gauge bad nailer, I bring in the clamps and clamp everything down nice and securely to make sure that I'm as close to 90 as I can get. With the first component glue up starting to dry, I'm moving on to the second component, which I call the H component. I'm calling that because it's shaped like an H. I know, fancy. So this component again is made up of three long pieces of plywood and three braces. Now again, I wanna keep this as close to 90 as possible. With this system, I need to be able to secure it to the fence and secure the J component to this so it's very secure. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just chisel out a mortise for some 3 8 nuts, drive them in, glue them in with CA. Now to attach the whole fence to the system, I don't need to use that much force. I just need it on there. So in this case, I'm just going to run threads right into the wood and then I'm going to add a little bit of strength to those by using some thin CA glue. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and glue up the H style fence. See, I told you it looked like an H. Backwards H. And then clamp it together. Now this is going to help me keep it pretty square. Now once that's glued up, I can clean up the squeeze out with my glue scoop and then add the braces. Now. I am going to screw this together too and the reason I'm doing that is I need this whole system to be super secure because I'm going to be cutting material through a table saw blade that's floating in the air so to speak and I don't want any vibration or as little as possible and I definitely don't want any movement. So after I got the screws in I'm going to throw on a couple coats of finish just to give it a little bit of protection and then go back to the J component and glue on and screw on the last piece. All right, so to install this thing, the H side just slides right over the top of the fence. And then you tighten these two bolts down. You could use knobs if you wanted to. I didn't have any in the shop, and this works just fine. On the other side, we're going to be able to raise and lower this J component with these two bolts that go through to the nuts that we installed earlier. Now, what's interesting about this is I'm able to raise this up, tighten it down, and now I could bring my fence over the top of my table saw blade. And we're gonna show you why this is handy right now. So this is why it's sometimes referred to as a flush fence or a flushing fence. You take my square, line it up with one of the teeth of the blade and bring my fence right over the top of the saw blade and tighten it down so now the fence is flush with the saw blade. Now I can use a large straight edge push shoe to do straight line ripping cuts. All right, so this is just a basically a really big push uh, shoe of sorts. So this has got some anti klein cork rubber on it. It's a really great non-slip material and a stop position. So rather than having to do a big, you know, rather to get my straight line ripping jig out, if I've already had this set up and it's a shorter piece, you wouldn't want to do this with really long pieces. I can take, just take this jig, line it up with the material just so it's 
sitting a little bit over the material there. And now I can run it through on this fence and it's gonna cut it flush, so I'm gonna have a perfectly straight edge. All right, so the reason it's also called a patterning fence or a templating fence is because you can use it in the flush trim mode or various other dimensions to do patterning, or in this case, cutting out a template. Now the advantage to this, like say I'm cutting out this hexagon shape because I might want to make a bunch of wooden tiles for a potential possible wooden floor video down the road, maybe. Um, I wanna be able to cut these out rapidly and quickly. Now I can double stick tape them down, hot glue them down, uh, I can do the CA trick, or I could put screws in if one side wasn't going to be exposed. But in our case, I want to be able to move quickly from piece to piece, so I'm using a template that's got a rubber grommet around here, hole in the middle, and I'm going to use my Grabo on the center of this to hold it all together as I run it through our system. Now, I've done a video on these. If you haven't seen them, and I'll link it at the end of this video. But for now, we're going to go ahead and see how well this works. I will add, the nice thing about this is, even though we're gonna be going at weird directions on different grains, I don't have to worry about the router doing any tear out if I'm going kind of up and against the grain. I don't have to worry about going in multiple passes. I can do it all in one pass. It's just super fast, and I'm gonna get a great clean cut as long as I have a good blade in. That is awesome. Zero tear out where I was cutting up the grain, nothing, no router bump. It is flawless and it's highly repeatable and it's fast. It's happy boy dance time. But I'm, I'm gonna do that off camera because <laughs> y'all don't wanna see that. <laughs> All right, so sometimes why it's called the floating fence. What I have here is another simple system that just goes over the top of this fence and I can clamp material to it basically in any position I want. Now, if I want to get a 45 degree angle on a piece of material on my table saw, that's easy. I just move my blade to 45 degree angle, use my cross cut or my fence to get that, to run the piece through and get that angle. Well, what if I need it right up against here? Now, before we get too far into this, you can do this with just your regular fence system and another jig or a piece of a sacrificial material that goes up against the fence so you can get that steep angle, and then again, clamping a piece to the back of the board to make sure that it stays level all the way through the cut, doesn't get sucked down into the blade and cause all kinds of havoc. But this is why they sometimes call this the floating fence. The nice thing advantage about this particular operation is you don't need a sacrificial piece of wood. If you already have this jig made, this is just a really quick operation and I can get angles that are a lot steeper than 45 degrees. Let's just cut it and see what happens. So that's a pretty cool use of this fence. Now, I realize this isn't something you're gonna use all the time like this, but if you need it, you know how now. And that's half the battle or something like that. I don't know. 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found some of the information today useful. If you did, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell notification. And if you know somebody with a table saw, share this with them. You can get a lot of use and a lot of fun function out of something as simple as this floating fence, taper fence, pattern fence, brushing fence. I think I'm missing something. Hybrid L fence. Yes, I was. Really appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Beam me up, Scotty.